Hey guys, NerdKing101 here, and today we are going to be talking about the controversial Naruto pairing between Naruto Zamaki and Sakura Haruno, known as Narusaku. This video goes along with our previous videos on things like Naruhina, the relationship between Naruto Hinata, and why this does not work, as well as our video on Sasu Saku, and why I think that works within the confines of the series at the very least on a thematic level, even if I did not support it. But today we're going to be talking about a pairing that I actually supported during the series and that I was very upset when I saw it did not happen, which, as I said earlier, is Narusaku. But before we get into the video, I would like to remind you that I do have a Patreon. And if you enjoy the content that you see on this channel and would like to support it, you can go over to my Patreon at www.patreon.com slash NerdKing101 and donate there to help support the shows that we make on this channel. And if that is too much, you can also check me out using the link that is in the description box down below that will take you right to the Patreon. Before we even get into the benefits of Narusaku being Endgame, I want to clear up a couple of misconceptions about the pairing. The major one being that Sakura has this thing about hitting Naruto, which is just not true. Canonically, Sakura only hits Naruto three times, one time in part one and two times in part two. Every other time it happened was added exclusively into the anime. However, I suppose you could make an argument for her hitting him four times, as she did hit him in Sasuke Shin in the Book of Sunrise. So the idea that Sakura abuses Naruto is just factually not true. She only hit him three times, and friends do hit each other. I have had friends hit me before, and I have had myself hitting my friends. There's nothing new about that, so I don't think you could really call Sakura hitting Naruto three times abusive. The main other point people bring up when talking about Sakura's abuse of Naruto is her confession of love to him during the Kage Summit arc. And that could really be a whole video on its own, going into Sakura's character arc and what that moment meant for it. So I will try to make this brief, but Sakura had no intention of hurting Naruto with that confession. Did she underestimate his care and love for Sasuke? Yes, she did. She did underestimate how much of it was about Naruto's friendship with Sasuke, and imagined more of it was about his promise to her, but that was an honest mistake. At the end of the day, Sakura had one goal in mind, which was keeping Naruto safe. Her heart was in the place of keeping him safe and protected, because she had become aware that Sasuke was now a member of the Akatsuki. If Naruto continued to pursue Sasuke, and the outcome was the same as the last two times they encountered him, he was going to be captured. The Nine Tails was going to be removed, and he was going to die. When people are discussing this moment, they often forget that to Sakura's knowledge, Sasuke is better than Naruto in basically every conceivable way, and that has nothing to do with Sakura's feeling for Sasuke and Sakura putting Naruto down. Because the last time Sakura and Naruto encountered Sasuke, Sasuke made Naruto and Sakura both together look like Chubb. He humiliated and annihilated not just the two of them, but Yamato, who used to be a member of the Anbu Black Ops, who were all at the very least Joni level in power and skill. Sakura's romantic feeling for Sasuke has nothing to do with it. There are two very clear examples of Sasuke annihilating Naruto in a fight. Their first fight in the Valley of the End, and when Naruto, Sakura, Sai, and Yamato tried to fight him after the time skip. Both times they fought, Sasuke beat him, and remember, as far as Sakura is aware, he also just defeated Killer B, a full, complete Jinchuriki that has the power over the Eight Tails. Sakura's plan was to make Naruto stop chasing after Sasuke, so she and her team could go eliminate him and deal with the problem permanently. Now, many people bring up how this is not a great plan, which it isn't. It is, for all intents and purposes, a terrible plan, and if not for Naruto, she would have died. But we also need to acknowledge that that has nothing to do with her confession to Naruto. Sakura's Pope confession to Naruto plan is an entirely different conversation from the confession to Naruto. Those two things are not entirely linked, and I'm not sure why people act like they are. That would be like if I asked the girl to marry me, and then I went out and got drunk with the guys afterwards, saying part of my proposal plan was going out with the guys and getting drunk. 
Yes, those two things are connected because I'm going on with a guy in celebration of her saying yes, but they're not inherently connected. They're not the same plan, they don't have the same amount of thought put into them. They're very dis- The point of the matter is that Sakura's plan was not to go and hurt Naruto with a fake confession. Her plan was to do whatever it took to keep him safe. Because as the theory tries to make really clear and people don't seem to be able to fully understand, every member of Team 7 does love each other. They all do love each other, be it as friends or romantically as in Sakura take with Sasuke. But at the end of the day, Sakura loves Naruto and Kakashi just as much as she loves Sasuke, just in different ways. So the confession had nothing to do with her wanting to hurt Naruto, in fact her intention was to protect him, so I don't think that's really an issue because her heart was in the right place. Now I'd like to move on to a popular counter-argument to Narutaku I've seen a lot of people make in regards to Naruhina being better, which is that Hinata was always there for Naruto, and I'm going to be honest with you, maybe to just the way I view love and relationships, but I don't think she was. People argue that Hinata was always there for Naruto, but she really wasn't. She was admiring him from a distance and believing in him, but Naruto having Hinata silently believe in him and not knowing it isn't her being there for him, that's her being a stalker. I like to look at it this way. What if you're a parent? You're a father, and you abandon your kid, but you still really love them, but you just don't want to put in the work of raising the kid. So you leave, but you follow them on Facebook. You never comment, you never message them. Sometimes you show up at their school and watch them hang out with their friends from a distance in your car, but you never go up to them. And you've seen your kid getting pissed on by some bullies at school, but you don't do anything. You don't interfere, you don't go up, and you just keep watching because you don't want to deal with the kid because you're scared of having a child. You may have loved your son, you could have loved them with all your heart, but that doesn't change the fact that you're not going to tell that father that they were there for their child. They weren't, they just kind of sat around and watched things happen. It's the same thing with Hinata. Yeah, maybe she did love Naruto, maybe she loved him a lot, but she wasn't supporting him. She was just looking at him from hiding behind corners. If you don't take actions to help somebody, you're not supporting them. So watching somebody from the shadows is not support. When Naruto needed support most, when he was a kid and he was growing up, Hinata watched him suffer from the shadows and did nothing. There's nothing wrong with Hinata believing in Naruto. I have no problem with that, but that is not her being there for him emotionally or physically. That's not her doing anything for Naruto, that's just something she did. She believed in some guy that she didn't even know, It doesn't do anything for Naruto, it doesn't change the fact that his life sucks. Now, I could go on and on all day listing the reasons each side said the pairing should and shouldn't happen, but while we move on to the reason I think it worked well, but before we get into the Naruto-Sakura romance kind of aspect of it, I want to talk about Sakura and Hinata's character arcs. Now, for Sakura, I honestly don't think it matters much in terms of her character arc. I think her character arc is designed in such a nice and beautiful way, which I will be talking about one day how much I love Sakura's character arc. But I think her character arc is so well done that I really don't think it matters if she's with Sasuke or Naruto. I would say that Sakura getting with Naruto takes her character arc a little further, while Sakura getting with Sasuke takes the thematic arc of forgiveness in the series a little bit further. They both further arcs of the story in different ways, and I think both of them contribute well to the story post-ending. And also, it's worth noting that in fairness, Sakura's character arc was never really about getting over her feelings for Sasuke, that just wasn't part of it, but now I'd like to move on to the reason I think the pairing would benefit the series on a storytelling level. First of all, I've gone on record saying I really like Boruto, that I think it's a fantastic show, but if I'm being honest with you, Hinata sucks in Boruto. Boruto basically confirmed what I talked about in the Naruhina video and why I don't think the pairing works, in the fact that Hinata doesn't really have a personality outside of wanting to get with Naruto and being in love with Naruto and thinking Naruto is so great, so she doesn't really have any relevance in Boruto. Even as a parent, you don't feel like she has any strong ideology she wants to pass on to her children. She's just kind of the wife that cooks the food. She's not even teaching the kids personal lessons. A lot of people say it's a cultural thing, and my counter to that is that it's really not. Yes, in Japan there are women like Hinata who stay at home and care for the home and the children, but I guarantee you those women have things they have to teach their children. 
threatened and personal beliefs and ideologies and things that are important to them that are completely 100% independent of everybody else in the world. Hinata doesn't have anything like that. Aside for maybe some jitsu from her clan, Hinata doesn't really seem like she has anything. She's like, this is what I want out of my child. She's really just going along with whatever Naruto wants. Naruto the only person in the relationship that seems to have any idea of what being a parent is about. Hinata's basically a checklist character. She's the mom, and she does all the mom jobs. She cleans the house, she cooks, she cleans, she does all the nonsense. She makes Naruto study for his test. And at the end of the day, she's always going to agree with Naruto. There is a point in Boruto where she even goes as far as to keep the fact that Boruto is developing a spring dojutsu to herself because she doesn't want to stress Naruto because he's working too hard. Not to just everything that Naruto said. Yes, there are jokey moments, like when she kissed Naruto and Boruto out of the house for fighting and making a lot of noise while Himawari is sick, but at the end of the day, there is never any conflict between them. Let's look at a theory that is pretty sexist, the theory that does not treat the female characters well, and it treats them way worse than Naruto, let's be honest here, in the form of Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z problems with female characters are, as I said, way worse than anything in Naruto. It's really bad, a lot of them basically exist just to be baby makers, it is a serious problem. But she, she did have a personality, she did have ideas of what it meant to be a parent, and she did argue with Goku about raising Gohan. There are many points in the theory when she tells Goku Gohan cannot train because she is concerned for his studying and his safety. While being comedic, it also did create a sort of tension, and in Naruto and Hinata's relationship, there is no room for that, because the way Hinata is written, she doesn't really have anything she could argue with Naruto about, because we haven't really established her having any of her beliefs of her own, or any goals for her children that conflict with Naruto's goals for his children. It creates a very boring family dynamic that lacks of basically any form of real tension, and I'm by no means saying Naruto needs to be miserable, and he needs to be fighting with his wife all the time, or something like that, but perhaps maybe when they return from a battle at Momoshiki, Hinata gets really mad at Naruto when she finds out that she let Boruto fight. Maybe she's really upset that he let their son be put in danger. Something. What does this have to do with Narutaku? Well, look at Sakura's character, and just look at the way she interacts with Sarada in Boruto. It is very clear that the most important thing in Sakura's life is Sarada, and Sarada's future, her health, her state of being. That's all the most important thing in her life. And she has had debate, not so much argument, but she has had serious adult conversations with Sasuke where they talk about Sarada like actual parents. Mind you, in the Sarada Uchiha arc, when Sakura had not seen her husband in over 12 years, upon reuniting with him, her instinct was to ignore his existence for about 3 or 4 minutes while she tended to her child. If you had done a sequel series where Naruto and Sakura had gotten together and made it about their child, I feel like there would have been more internal conflict, especially if you went with the same plotline about Naruto not being around a lot. Sakura would probably have major issue with that, because unlike with Sasuke, he's in the village and he's not off in other dimensions. Sakura, Sasuke understands, he's off in other dimensions doing very important work where he's literally physically not there, Naruto's just at an office doing paperwork, and she would have a major issue with that. In fact, a great way to make Boruto's dislike for his father make more sense and be more sympathetic would be him having to watch Naruto and Sakura fight over something. Seeing your parents fight is very traumatic and can be really hard for a kid. And I think that's a great way to lead into the reason I personally like Naruto Sakura. One, I feel like Sakura was there for Naruto. During the shooting exam, she was either willing to raise her hand and disqualify herself from the exam in order to protect Naruto's dream. And remember how angry Sasuke probably would have been at her if she had done that. Becoming a shooting was a very big deal for Sasuke so he could advance and grow stronger in order to kill Itachi, but that didn't stop Sakura from being ready to do what it took to protect Naruto's dream because she cared and she would cared enough to act on. Another reason I think it works is because we've seen them interact more canonically and it just seems more natural and believable to me. Also, I implied this earlier when I talked about Boruto, but I think Naruto and Saku is very fun. I think there's a lot going on with their 
they're dynamic. I think they're dynamic and entertaining, but also works on a serious level. So you can have really sweet wholesome stuff, but the characterization of Naruto and Sakura also allowed them to argue and butt heads and their rooms and see conflict and explore how that conflict affects the characters around them. It also could explore how it affects them as a team. They were not doing not so, we never really saw them team up before the relationship. With Naruto and Sakura, it would be very interesting, in my opinion, to explore how that relationship affects their ability to work as a team. After the war, they were teenagers. You could explore whether or not the relationship became a distraction, which isn't something you can really explore with Naruhina, because we didn't have enough content for Naruto and Inazu's relationship before they got together, and you can't really do it with Sasuke because Sasuke is never going to get distracted by something like a relationship, because he's Sasuke. It's also implied, while well, not explained well, that Sakura is the first person to learn about the Nine Tails in Naruto's age group and accept him in knowing it. Whether or not Sasuke knew is made very unclear in the series, but not including Sasuke who were unsure of. Sakura is the first person in Naruto's age group to learn about the Nine Tails and be incredibly supportive of him over. And overall, it's undeniable if you look back at the manga, Naruto and Sakura have more interactions than Naruto and Hinata do, and the two did bonds more throughout the series. But it comes down to the fact that I think Naruto and Sakura are a lot of fun, and I think that is why I really like Naruto and Sakura. I think it's a really fun, wholesome pairing that also have potential for really good and adult and serious storylines if they wanted to take in that direction and actually have conflict in the relationship. Overall, that is why I think Narutaku could have worked very well. Let me know your thoughts on Narutaku in the comment section down below. Remember to also subscribe if you liked the video, and if you really, really liked it, you can go check out my Patreon, which is linked in the description box down below. And above all else, guys, I hope you all have a fantastic day.